Broad Street has been a house of horrors for the Florida Panthers this season. On today's show, we're going to discuss the loss for the Cats on the second end of a back-to-back. But, however, the sky isn't falling for the Florida Panthers' playoff hopes after Tuesday night. We're going to discuss this next on the show. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, March 22nd edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at MondoMan12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and send in your screenshot of your subscription and along with your five-star rating. And send it over to me on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers or email at LockedOnFLAPanthers at gmail.com for your chance to win two free tickets to the Florida Panthers versus Toronto Maple Leafs game on April 10th. Best of luck, everybody. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. So the Florida Panthers on the second end of a back-to-back lose to the Philadelphia Flyers. The the Cats got a big win the night before, of course, against the Detroit Red Wings, where it was, where we discussed how it was more than just a road win for the Panthers. But things can turn somewhat quickly for for the play for the Panthers and their season. Uh, just depending on what happens the very next night. And it was a quick turnaround for the Panthers and the Panthers with no Sam Bennett, no Anthony Duclair, and then Alex Lyons starting his first game since January 28th, Sergey Bobrovsky getting a rest. And the Panthers, just a, a, a few minutes in the second period, was really the story of the game for the Florida Panthers falling by final score of 6-3 to three in Philadelphia. But it is a Winans Wednesday edition of the show, which means Jacob Winans is back on on the show to discuss this six to three loss over the Philadelphia against the Philadelphia Flyers. Jacob, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, as always. Thank you, as always, as always, for joining. And you know, we, it, it's it's been it's been a little a little bit of a different territory for the Panthers as a, a, as far as Tuesday night as of late where the broadcasts discuss how the Florida Panthers haven't given up a four goal four goal period since November. They haven't trailed by more than three in over a month, which was the last time that happened was that road game against the Nashville Predators. But let's talk about what really happened before puck drop. Of course, uh, there after Sam Bennett left uh, the game against Detroit early, didn't come back, didn't um, Paul Maurice didn't provide an update and him not playing and then of course Anthony Duclair uh not on the ice in warmups for the Panthers. We knew Alex Lyon was going to start around three hours before Giovanni Smith was activated off LTIR for for this game. So the Panthers went 11 F7 D in, in this game. But also with going 11 F7 D with an, an odd number um on your forward groups that means a little bit more of communication needs to be ha- happening on on for for the forward group of who's going to take that extra shift and all. I mean, and the Panthers, I mean, they they scored a minute and 15 into this game, but part of me felt like this game was kind of lost when 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 the Panthers had got a power play just not even 30 seconds after they score the first goal and they get five power play shots on goal. The Panthers had 13 power play shots on goal in the game against Carter Hart and Carter and he was the he was the ultimate MVP for the Philadelphia Flyers as the Panthers just uh it was it was hard to get goals by uh Carter Hart yeah uh, I felt like the Panthers really had full control of the game for for really the first half of the game even though they they did end up trailing um 
uh, on a couple of uh, really opportunistic goals by the Flyers. I feel like that was kind of the theme of the entire game. Uh, the Panthers had a lot of good chances against Carter Hart. Uh, the first period in particular, he made 18 saves on 19 shots. Uh, anytime you get 19 shots on a goalie in a period, you expect at least two or three of those to get in um, just based on the quality of the, the chances the Panthers had. Uh, I, I felt like this going in, I tweeted that this was a trap game. It felt like it from the very beginning. Um, some guys missing in, from the lineup, uh, they they definitely were not uh, planning for Duclair not to play. Uh, Paul Marie spoke about it after the game that that was kind of a, a surprise to them uh, when they got to the rink yesterday. They didn't expect that he was going to miss, but uh, Sam Bennett, we knew that there was a chance he wouldn't play after leaving uh, the game the night before with an injury, a, a day-to-day injury that was undisclosed. So being really, really shorthanded on, on offense, it's unfortunate because Duclair was playing really well. Uh, he's been driving play, and they, the Panthers have been one of the best teams in the league uh, since he returned from his injury in the few games he's been back. And then Sam Bennett has been uh, really in en- the engine for that uh, bennett kachuk Hagee line the past few weeks. They've been on an absolute tear. So that was a really big loss to have those two guys missing the game. I know it's Philly. I know on paper they're, they're, they shouldn't be that difficult, but this is a team that just took Carolina to overtime. Uh, this is a team that's played uh, some really good – some really good opponents and they've played them tight. Uh, it's a John Tortorella coach team. Uh, those teams are not, are not pushovers. Uh, whether you like him or hate him, he gets results and he get he, his teams play hard. Uh, so I felt like the Panthers really didn't bring that the necessary energy. And then uh, you, at, at some point though, you do have to get the goaltending and Philly, it felt like capitalized on every single chance they got. Alex Lyon just couldn't really come up with that big game changing save at any point. Uh, so it was kind of a perfect storm of things that could go wrong for the Panthers yesterday. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and and that's kind of the result you get. Yeah, and and just uh, just when 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 you think of Alex Lyon in, in the crease, you think about that game changing save for 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 the Panthers and a few good ones early on. But of course, the the Philadelphia Flyers knew that if they made one move towards the forehand, and then they could do it uh, backhand. And seeing that Alex Lyon uh, would overcommit, then then they they definitely would see an advantage uh, there. But also the the first deep pairing for for the Panthers was just not up to par for for this for and it, and it started in the first period when Owen Tippett was driving uh, on a breakaway and then Forsling got him got him with with a slash uh, there and and even even clears for the Panthers it was a. a Eric Stahl wasn't able to clear, and then it got to the. It resulted in the first uh, goal by the Philadelphia Flyers there as well, and also the times missing the net. We saw Sam Reinhart miss the net many times, even on the on the five on three as well, and the and even in the second period, even before the Flyers. Uh, scored two, three goals in two minutes and one second. I mean, it was back and forth trading chances of uh, of sustained uh, zone time and and board battles. Gudis loses a board battle to uh, to Brandon Lemieux, and then uh, and then Travis Sanheim on his on his goal. We, he saw that line was committing early. He was already um, about to leap out, about to fall on his stomach, uh, and and Travis Sanheim uh, takes advantage of that as well a a good one one good note for the panthers is that brandon montour is now two two points away from from tying keith yandel's record for most points by a defenseman but even after that even after the philadelphia flyers took a 2-1 lead wade allison had a breakaway uh where where ekblad just fumbles the puck at the panthers blue line and then he he goes on a uh, on on a breakaway there but luckily alex Lyon stops it but also the, the third goal, I think that was the major, major backbreaker where Forsling and Ekblad were so wide. The middle of the ice was just open for uh, Scott Law- uh, Scott Lawton. And and then he makes a beautiful move on Alex Lyon. Like like you said, a game-changing save ne- was necessary. But, of course, with with the op- the ice open right in the middle, it, it gave Scott Lawton just the opportunity uh, to, to do that. But... Let's just talk about that first pair, Jacob. It was just not a good performance for the Forsling Ekblad combo. Definitely not. Uh, Forsling and Ekblad. It, it it really you could really kind of see it starting uh, in in the Detroit game. Um, it, they Forsling did score a goal in that game. 
a uh, really big goal. And he made some great recoveries um, to, to save goals in that one. But as a, as a pair, uh, Ekblad really didn't feel like he was pulling his weight against Detroit. And they gave up they, that pair in particular gave up two back-to-back breakaways in the first period against Detroit. And all of a sudden you're thinking, uh, this, this isn't good. Um, what, where's this coming from? And then in the third period, Ekblad takes a really bad penalty. And then on the delayed penalty, Dylan Larkin scores uh, a goal, which brings that game close. That was kind of the warning sign of, of this, this pairing right now, something's off. Uh, and then, and then last night it just, it all fell apart for Forsley and Ekblad uh, defensively. Uh, Ekblad made a lot of, a lot of costly errors, uh, try, just trying to do too much at the, uh, with the puck. I feel like, uh, he has a tendency to do that sometimes, but the, the problem with Ekblad is that, uh, he doesn't necessarily have the foot speed to, to make a, a ton of extra moves at the blue line. And, and when he's at his best, he's keeping it simple. I felt like last year when he was playing at a Norris trophy caliber, uh, I feel like he was keeping it simple, uh, not, not trying to do too much, not trying to dangle around guys, just make smart passes, get pucks to the net because he has a wicked shot. And I feel like he needs to utilize that more. But a, a few of those mistakes in particular last night really cost the Panthers. Uh, he, took, he he fumbled one in the third period where he had a wide open pass, just go D to D, he had a wide open pass to just go across the blue line. And, and there was a, a shooting lane, but he tried a head fake, tried to get around a guy, gives up the puck and ends up taking a penalty for slashing. Uh, it, it's It's little things like that where – split second decisions he's got to be he's got to be smarter and not put himself in a bad spot but yeah like you said the 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 spacing between Forsling and Ekblad was it was off the timing was off some very simple passes were not crisp you don't know if it's if it's a a, a fatigue thing they maybe maybe they were just tired or uh, just some extra work that needs to be done as far as film or or, or uh, chemistry and practice but uh, it's a bad game they're both they're both excellent players, and they'll they will. Uh, I, I have no doubt they'll bounce back, and they're both going to be key parts of the of a run towards the playoffs. But uh, what they showed the past two games is not really what you're looking to see from your your top D pair, and that's Scott Lawton goal in particular. Um, uh, of course, we'd love to see Alex Lyon make a, a miraculous save there, but Lawton had about as much time as a shootout attempt on that. It, you you can't have a guy uh, put on about three moves right in front of your goalie to to flip a backhand and he had all the time in the world and it, you just yeah that like you said that that was really the backbreaker i thought the panthers were right in it until then yeah so um so yeah the 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 pairing of that was just uh off and for and for the panthers it it got them out of this game uh very late in the second period where they had to make a where they attempted to make a comeback in the third period, but we're, we're just unable to. We're we're going di- to continue this discussion in the in, in the second segment of, of today's show, and we're going to discuss how we're feeling overall now that that the Panthers, for for the time being, do not control their destiny for the playoff chase. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel Sportsbook. And we're in the middle of the NBA season in tournament season is heating up. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. Then you can bet everything from the money line point scores to three strain. Plus FanDuel lets you combine your bets for at a chance for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance on a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Segment number two here on this March 22nd edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast is another edition of Winans Wednesday. And continuing the conversation based on, on the Florida Panthers' uh, 6-3 loss against the Philadelphia Flyers. So we spoke... Um, very early on in the first segment how communication is definitely key when it comes to when it comes to being having an odd, odd number on both your forwards and and d and uh let's just go to the fifth goal uh well actually before uh another bad play by forsling and ekblad where they were just behind the net lost uh lost uh kates and and also lion loses his stick there uh which if he had a stick, he was a, he would have been able to poke poke the puck out, and Travis Sanheim doesn't get his second goal. But also, 
Mark Stahl, Mark Stahl on the fifth goal going going a little out and then Montour having to go back into his spot, which which kind of has like a little bit of a chain reaction on the right side where Ryan Lomberg had to cover for one of the D and then Ivan Provorov jumps in, which uh, great on the Philadelphia Flyers for, for realizing that and taking advantage of that. And then Alex Lyon is on his stomach already and then Provorov goes uh, backhand to make it 5-2. Uh, talk about, let's talk about a little bit of how how much of a breakdown that is and how much the, and how the communication was off based on based on that play specifically when especially when when you do have those odd numbers of of forwards and and d yeah communication is everything in situations like that especially um because like you said uh, you you explained it perfectly when you get when you got to the lombard lombard part of that um whenever someone is out of position, whenever someone gets pulled too far into someone else's assignment, uh, whenever someone doesn't, doesn't cover their, their area of the zone or, or cover their man, whenever that, that situation happens, it causes everyone on the ice to have to fill the next spot over. Uh, and and it, it, it's really a chain reaction. It's similar to, I'm a basketball guy. It's similar to a zone defense where, uh, when the ball's on one side of the court, everyone has to shift over uh, a, a position uh, and and you follow the ball that way. But in hockey, um, that's not what you want to have to do. That's that's not the idea of, of defense in hockey. Everyone's supposed to cover their zone. Uh, and when someone is out of position, it causes everyone to shift over. Um, and one of the most difficult things defensively, and this is why guys like Sasha Barkov are, are so highly regarded and, and so well known for their defensive skill, it's so difficult for a forward to cover for a defenseman. Uh, it's unnatural. It's it's not the position you're used to playing. And in in most cases, defensemen are skating backwards. Uh, forwards are not as as uh, in tune with with the with back skating. Um, and then you're just you're much deeper in the zone than you'd like to be. Forwards want to be up high, out out near the top of the blue lines where they can where they can make plays on on the defenseman at the blue line. But when you have to come back and cover for a defenseman, it's usually forward on forward. Mm-hmm. And the the forward on offense always has the advantage over a forward on defense, unless it's a guy like Sasha Barkov or Patrice Bergeron or one of those elite defensive forwards. Not everyone can do what those guys can do. And asking Ryan Lomberg to cover for a defenseman because of a blown assignment, that's usually going to be a recipe for disaster. It's no, uh, it's not a knock on Ryan Lomberg at all. It's just an, an, a really unnatural spot for him to be in. And even if, the coverage, even if you everyone sufficiently covers for for the guy uh, that that's out of out of position, at the end of the day, if if the team with the puck is able to move it quickly enough, there, there's always going to be a, a spot left uncovered. Because if everyone rotates one spot over, if that puck manages to get to the final player on offense, there's still no one there, uh, mm-hmm. and and that's really that's really where the the Panthers ended up uh, getting into trouble on that goal in particular. And again. Uh, I would point back to the Detroit game where we saw warning signs of that uh, when David Perron had the, the entire Panthers defense, Aaron Eckblad chases a guy out to the bench, uh, leaves the entire uh, one entire half of the ice open because not everyone's able to recover. Perron pulls Bobrowski out and, and uh, Suter's able to uh, bury one right at the net. It, it's, it was the exact same, exact same type of play where, where, one blown coverage causes everyone to have to shift over and it leaves a, a half of the ice open almost. And it's, it's a really dangerous spot to be in. No, no doubt. And that was the, that was the, that was, that, that was definitely the dagger for, for the Florida Panthers. And, and, and in the period where the, where the first 40 minutes was just dominated possession for, for the cats. And you, you think about the Aaron Eckblad as well, taking a slash before the, before uh, Kevin Hayes goes on a rush and then, uh, but the Philadelphia Flyers in the third period only had one shot, one shot on goal through the, through the first ten minutes. Kachuk had a short-handed uh, chance, uh, but it was, it was stopped before it could even get into the net. Uh, the Panthers had a five-on-three where uh, Brandon Lemieux uh, has an instigator penalty, goes out, um, has a hit on uh, Barkoff in in the Philly zone, and then Reinhardt in the in the neutral zone, and then before him and. Gudis could even before Gudis agrees to 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 fight, he he takes off his gloves and 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 has gets the instigator penalty and and the Panthers they go five on three after Verhage was tripped and 
the amount of times that they missed the net on that five on three, especially Sam Reinhardt, my goodness. But he did make it up for uh, getting getting a uh, getting uh, one off a deflection to to go uh, bar, bar down to make it uh, to to make it five three at at the, at the time for for the Panthers. But too little, too late for 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 the Panthers on, on that. But uh, and also multiple offsides too on the power play, and and I know they were down. It was hard for them to come back either way, but. The power play towards the end was just that again. We talk about miscommunications on the defensive end, but this was miscommunications on the offensive end with with being up a man, and even in and even with being down. You had when when the Panthers went back to five on four when the five on three ended. You pulled the goalie and bring on the extra skater as well, and then just my goodness, the communication issues based on the power play. You're you're not surprised with the with the defensive end on five on five but man that 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 one the the multiple offsides was very frustrating how did you feel about that those yeah i want to discuss that that power play in particular actually um we're we're now 70 games into this season we're over 70 games into this season the panthers still have not scored a goal on five on three all year mm -hmm. that's really concerning because they've yeah. had they've had chances at, at five on three we've had we've seen them have a full two minutes of five on three last night we saw them have over a minute of five on three time a minute and you eight, can, I believe. A minute and eight seconds is exactly right. You cannot, you simply can't compete if you can't score on five on three. That is, it's almost like, it's almost a free throw. I mean, that's a goal that should, you, that's a spotted goal at any time that you get a five on three. You should be converting on at least, at least two out of every three five on threes you get. The Panthers still have not scored on one. And last night's was probably the most frustrating one all season um, because they actually, they didn't overpass. They got shots to the net. Um, they just missed the net every time they they got a shot through almost. They had a perfect play set up for Sam Reinhardt, and he he flubs it over the crossbar by about five feet. Um, the Bar uh, Barkov had a couple chances from the side. The, sh the shots got blocked. Uh, I felt like they, they were really uh, uncoordinated on that five on three, and they end up scoring after the fact with, with Sam Reinhardt. And then you get a, they get a really really good chance with Carter Rahegi that that Carter Hart uh, absolutely robbed him. Uh, the, I thought it was a guaranteed goal. Uh, Hart makes like we talked about a game changing save. I felt like the Panthers if that goes in, they've got enough time to come back and tie it, and we're we may be telling a whole different story today. But converting on that five on three, especially in a situation like that, you have to score when it's five on three so that you can continue the power play after the fact. And and I felt like they they missed a giant opportunity there it, for for about a five minute stretch in that third period it felt like everything Philly could do wrong in closing out a game they were doing everything wrong closing out that game and they gave the Panthers so many chances to get back into it and, and the the Panthers really didn't take any of them uh, the offsides calls the the missing the net on the five on three I mean if a team is giving you a even a, a crack to get to open the door back into a game. You have to you have to convert on that and 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 give yourself the chance. And the Panthers really didn't do it until it was too late. Uh, I felt like that five on three was was kind of the backbreaker, and and it's really unacceptable to have miscommunications breaking into the zone with with offsides. And then a, another note on that five on three, I'm not sure if it was a communication issue or what what uh, Paul Maurice was was really thinking there, but I don't understand really pulling the goalie at the end of the five on three. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna take the risk and go all out. Uh, empty down net. multiple goals. Yeah, but down three goals. What do you have to lose? I, I mean, you you make it a six on three. I feel like that's a virtual guarantee. Um, but he pulls he pulls Alex Lyon as the first penalty is expiring, and it becomes a six on four. The Panthers didn't really uh, it, it really it really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I would have if you're going to take that big of a risk, do it when it's five on three, not when it's five on four. So I felt like the communication was off from coaching all the way down. Yeah, and and let's all, you also mentioned about how what Philly did to close out the game was they did everything wrong that they could have. And it's all, uh, it included not converting on a two on one with the net empty too. I, net I believe empty. Owen, Owen Tippett was on the ice for that one for, yep. for the Philadelphia Flyers. And it, the, the cross ice pass that Montour fed to Verhage, just an incredible stop by Carter Hart. Now he's 89 of 95 against the Panthers this season uh, with a 936 save percentage, just incredible. Uh, the, the Flyers definitely did have the goaltending advantage on Tuesday night, no doubt about that.
But we're going to transition to segment number three, where we're going to discuss the playoff odds, where they look at now, prepare and prepare for the, the week ahead, where this loss, at least how I'm feeling, maybe Jacob feels a little differently. Uh, the sky is not falling for the Panthers as far as their playoff hopes. We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about Indeed, and no matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field or ice, you got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot, shot at winning with recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. With instant match, 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their, their job posts, according to Indeed data. Indeed helps star applicants to shine over 135 assessment tests from cooking to coding. With virtual interviews, Indeed saves you time. You can message, schedule, T- top talent seamlessly all in one place indeed knows how that finding the right skills make all the difference that's why you don't pay for applications from quality candidates to meet your must-have requirements if, if you don't have players on the field with the right skills it's it's breakaway speed or elite playmaking ability you're going to have a tough time winning the same goes for your business with your business it's starting its championship run nothing matters and more than hiring the best team with indeed you have the power to build MVPs faster and and with and with indeed candidates you invite apply an instant match three times more likely to apply for your job than candidates you only see in search need hiring you need indeed third and final segment here on this Wednesday March 22nd edition of the lockdown Florida Panthers podcast where the Florida Panthers fall to the Philadelphia Flyers by final score of six to three in philadelphia on broad street and let's look at the money puck odds for the florida panthers now uh 73 according to money puck uh the the they still like their chances and i think it's a lot based on who another opponent plays in the next two days which uh the pittsburgh penguins they face off against the colorado avalanche tonight 8 p.m on tnt and that's the first end of a back-to-back and then they go to Dallas on the second end and both of both of those teams are fighting for the central division title so and the Penguins are down a lot of their uh, decor right now for the Panthers so as of now the Florida Panthers don't control their destiny but Jacob I don't feel the sky is falling for for this Cats team after losing last night against Philly I do think however it just makes Thursday's game against Toronto and Saturday's game against New York just oh so much more crucial because there's only two teams that the florida panthers are under 500 against this season before before they went against philly the only team they were under 500 as far as points percentage were the new york rangers now that went to two against the philadelphia flyers three out of four points you would have been happy with but now it just makes these next two games even more even more crucial for the cats yeah i don't i don't think the sky's falling either um namely uh, because of of Pittsburgh's uh, opponents that they have coming up uh Colorado and Dallas on a back to back on the road that that's really tough uh in Casey wow. DeSmith we've heard is is uh not feeling great I'm not sure if he's going to get the net for either of these games if you go Tristan Jari two in a row uh with a depleted decor I don't know how well they could hang but again this is a, a Sidney Crosby led team it's an Evgeny Malkin led team it's a Chris Letang led team this is a team that has the guys who have been there, know how to get clutch wins, and they're they're battle tested. Uh, Sidney Crosby hasn't missed a playoff since I believe his rookie season. Uh, it, it's it's a it, it's a it's a really tall task for them on the road in those two uh, in those two environments back to back. But um, the those are two juggernauts out in the West, T- two teams that can really put goals on you in a hurry and and can play some really solid defense. And they do have a lot to play for, Colorado and Dallas. So I don't think Pittsburgh is going to get uh, an easy an easy matchup by by any means from from teams taking their foot off the gas. I don't think we're quite there yet, where where we're playing against teams that that are 
uh, we're we're set, we're locked in. We don't have to try as hard. We're we're just getting ready for the playoffs. We're not at that point yet, where teams are are taking their foot off the gas. So that that helps the Panthers a lot. Um, unless Pittsburgh goes on a, a really unlikely run and knocks off both of those teams and and starts a win streak, I feel like the Panthers, uh, for all intents and purposes, do kind of control their own destiny because I think I think Pittsburgh will lose a game uh, out of that, at least a game out of that uh, their upcoming schedule. But yeah, it, it it puts the Panthers in a tough spot because Philly is a much easier opponent than than Toronto. Philly is a much easier opponent than the New York Rangers, and these are two teams that made a lot of additions at the trade deadline. So what we've played against the team we've played against in those two teams before is not the team we're facing now. Um, that's and we struggled before they made their deadline addition. So it's it's going to be a real, a real challenge. I feel like Toronto, we match up a little better, but that really only comes down to the health of Sam Bennett and Anthony Duclair. I think if those two guys are out, we're going to have a really, really hard time. Uh, Sam Mm -hmm. Bennett, Sam Bennett as our second line center, uh, being able to to roll out a one a and and one B forward line. I I feel like that's, that's key against a team like Toronto that who is so strong up the middle with, with Matthews and and Tavares Uh, you have to be able to match up with that. And without Sam Bennett, I don't think we match up very well at all. So it's going to come down to the health of those two guys and the Rangers. They scare me because of their power play prowess. Uh, The Panthers have have been really undisciplined. I believe they still have the most, the most penalties taken in the entire NHL. Yep. The The penalty kill has not exactly been sharp lately. The Rangers can punish you with two really lethal power play units. So I feel like, and and the thing with the Rangers is they get the goaltending. Um, Shesterkin's one of the best in the world. So it's a really tall task. Toronto's coming into that game pissed off uh, without a doubt because they got embarrassed by the Islanders last night. It, it's a really tall task. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that the that the Panthers have any any kind of advantage in those two games. It, it, it's a really really difficult difficult stretch for the Panthers here. But with that said, it's difficult for Pittsburgh. The Islanders, they have a couple games on their schedule coming up that that should on paper be winnable for them, but they've been on a hot streak. They're going to run into some losses. They're not going to win out the rest of the way. It's unrealistic. The Panthers are yeah, very much Panthers. in Exactly. It, we're, we're very much in this fight. It's it, it really could come down to the last week of the season. And by the end of the season, the Panthers – the one advantage they will have is that when when these other teams are done playing, the Panthers are the last ones to finish their games. They'll know what needs to be done before they have to do it. So I, I still feel good about their chances. I'm, I'm with Money Puck. I think we still got a, a solid 70 to 75% chance to get in. It's just about winning the games. And you have to at least, at least pull a win out of Toronto or or the Rangers. I'm, I'm really I'm really hoping for at least three out of four points between between those two. Yeah, and uh, let's not forget also, even though Ryan O'Reilly won't be with the, in the lineup for the before uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs on Thursday, uh, likely going to return for for the postseason. A lot of trades that happen with getting Sam Lafferty part of that third line, Jake McCabe getting being on that second line for the for the Leafs, uh, TJ Brody's day to day for for the for the Leafs. Uh, yeah, seven to three, not not a result that you you like and. They're, like you said, they're going to come pissed off. The Florida Panthers did play them well in their matchup, but we should have won that game. In tangent about why they should have won that game. Yep. You could go back to that episode uh, if you guys want to listen to just Jacob and I rant on that first uh, Maple Leafs game. So, so yeah, a, a big opportunity for, for the Panthers. Uh, and even Nick Fairbanks even pointed this out about Duclair. Um, he hasn't played on a back-to-back so far this season, and I'm not – we're, we're thinking the long game when it comes to Duclair's health based on, based on, based on him playing and l- likely we'll, we'll see him not play in a back-to-back next week when the Florida Panthers take on the Leafs and Canadians uh, on a back-to-back next Wednesday and Thursday. So kind of keep note of that in case, uh, in case Anthony Duclair is in fact out next week, but I'm, 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 I'm hoping that Duke will be back on Thursday, on Thursday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And listen, uh, it's, it's a, you, you, this is definitely a must win and must two points for for the Panthers uh, here. So ho- ho- hopefully uh, for the Panthers, of course, we're going to see, unfortunately, a lot of Leaf fans in Sunrise. Um, so so hopefully we can the Florida Panthers can send them home a, a little sad. So, Jacob, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. 
Uh, for programming note for everyone, no show on Thursday. So the next time we will see you guys will be Friday for a Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. So th this was our little preview of uh, Cats Maple Leafs here uh, on, on the show. But Jacob, thank you so much once again for joining and let everybody know where they can find you online. Absolutely. You can find me online at Jacob Winans 8. Quick message to Panthers fans. Uh, as Armando said, Leafs and Rangers next to opponents. Those are two teams that tend to fill the building with blue. Uh, let's make sure we're we're at the games, uh, bringing the energy. It's very, very noticeable. Um, me and Armando don't get to go to all the games because we live here in Orlando, but I, I promise you the, the, the crowd is noticeable even through TV. Um, make sure you, you match their energy and, and make it a home environment because it is very, very important this time of year. So I encourage all Panthers fans to be there. And, uh, yeah, just enjoy these last 10 games. Absolutely. And uh, thank, thank you so much, Jacob. And we, we will talk next week, my friend. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Stu Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen of the day. Game to game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked on game to game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only locked on can deliver. Follow game to game NHL on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you, you get your podcast. So I'm Ramon Velez with Jacob Winans. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Where it's your team every day. <laughs>